And okay, it's my first proper LN2 session now in 2025, starting with X50A platform, as I managed to finally find a very strong Core i7-960, which is my last Bloomfield CPU that I still haven't taken all of the top scores with. Yes, I'm still missing the highest validation with Core i7-Extreme 965, but it's pretty much the same as what I had with the Core i7-950 a long time ago, many years ago. The performance tests, they are a lot more important to me than actual validation. But with the 960, I already have the validation at 5812. So the only tests I'm missing are Super by 1M and 32M. This CPU is definitely strong. I could run like 4.7, around 4.7 on water cooling in W prime with 1.36 volts. My previous best, which I used for the highest validation, was only like 4.45 to 4.5, I think like 4.45. So we have at least 200 megahertz higher headroom with this one already from the get-go. So let's see what happens. So uh, Rampage 3 Extreme, as always. T-Rex container, the pink thermal paste from Thermal Grizzly. Three sticks of Corsair Dominator TDX2 memory from Samo CX Tapaka. NVIDIA 6500 GT with capture card as always and now for the first time I'm using the Corsair AX1600i with the world's strongest 3.3 and 5 volt rail among modern power supplies that is. So just Windows XP as always with X58 platform and I will go straight for the single for that stuff. I will not run W Prime. Now at the start, I will run it afterwards if we get those scores I'm looking for, just to get more headroom over the current top scores that I already have. Okay, this was harder than what I thought. 545 at the moment, let's try. So far doesn't seem to scale that well. No idea what this is. Five five something. Minus one hundred and thirty at the moment. Yeah, the CPU was much harder, or is harder to bench than what I thought. It's 2, 5, 4, 1, something like 5.6 something gigahertz, 15.06. Fifteen oh six seconds, my previous best was 15 to 20, I think. So small improvement, now we want 1M. But yeah, very, very hard to bench this CPU. Okay, we want
something like this, I think, 7140. Almost. So finally got this thing to work a bit better. So new top score. Let's try to get the screenshot first. So don't remember was it 275 it was 275 something. So 7.094 seconds previous top score by Gutherich. However you pronounce his name, 7140 from the United States. So this like this was like almost 50 milliseconds faster. Frequency, frequency should be under 5.7, close to 5.7, like 5.6.8, at minus 100. So definitely awesome. Okay, that was definitely hard. Now with colder temperatures, I finally got it, but let's see if we can actually get a screenshot with the right frequency, but we got it anyways. The capture card method is definitely all right. So six minutes, 19.750 seconds. Previous top score is by Dinos22 from Team Australia at six minutes, 20.188 seconds, made in 2009. So this is like, uh, like uh, 430, 430 milliseconds faster, so like 0.4 seconds faster. So I had to try this so many times, definitely hard. So CPU was at 228.3, memory like 1800 something. 665 1860 common rate one and rampage free extreme 1502 bars so let's uh, try to get the screenshot at the right frequency okay so we got it Damn awesome, now I have everything with the Core i7-960, 1M, 32M, PyFast, W Primes. Yeah, this CPU is so flaky, I'm sure it can do much, much better, like uh, 1M, above 5.8, etc. But I don't have that much resources and time to max this CPU out, I just wanted to see like roughly what it can do. And now we have everything, but I'm sure there's a lot more headroom remaining. 
at least this CPU feels awesome. So 232.7. Sometimes this CPU just doesn't want to run at all. Two thirty two point seven. See <laughs> six nine five three. I think if Giggles is watching this video, he's definitely smiling. And sa sorry, I don't have like camera for the pouring, etc. But I'm just keeping the CPU at like 110, 115 at the moment. That should be at around like 5.7, so 6.953, almost 200 milliseconds faster than the previous top score by Gutter Z from America. We can try the screenshot again, but probably gonna, it's gonna fail. Yeah. Okay, let's try like 5.9. Can we improve with this one? Five eight eight seven. Okay, it seems we got the five eight five eight eight seven. I wanna see five nine. So now this should be it. Yeah, I think yeah, we got it. We got it. We got it. And okay, it went much better than what I expected. I'm extremely happy right now with this uh, Bloomfield Core i7-960. So we actually even got that 6 GHz validation with, with that last attempt. So I thought it failed because it was so rapid after seeing that 6006 MHz on CPU-Z, it actually crashed. But it actually saved the file and I just checked it on CPU-Z validator website and it works so we got the highest validation as well with the Core i7-960 at uh, over 6 gigahertz 6006 something megahertz so that's almost 200 megahertz higher than uh, the previous highest frequency with the Core i7-960 I barely got the new record with the uh, with my previous CPU a few months ago in like October of last year but yeah, so the hardest one of them all was definitely the Super Pi 32M. Uh, I think, I'm not sure, was my first run a bit faster than the last one, but they definitely were very close to each other. So the new top, top score in Super Pi 32M was uh, 6 minutes 19.750, and the previous top score was by Dinos22 uh, at 5.5. 6.8 something gigahertz, I think like 5.6, 5 uh, 5.689, so 227.4 times 25. At least ground from Germany has heralded that score by Dinos22 as one of the best Bloomfield or X58 Super Pi 32M performance results of all time. So it's definitely not easy to beat that one. And it seems my performance was very on par with Dinos 22 as I ran the test in the end at uh, 228.3 times 25. So just the tiniest possible notch higher than what he ran. So about the same performance memory, I had a bit better on uh, the timings, I think, at least on the main timings. But otherwise, very similar numbers like CPU, Encore, memory. So definitely awesome. And my best Super Pi 1M was, I think it was 6.95 seconds. But it's all, always very hard to get the last screenshot at that uh, set uh, frequency. And it doesn't really matter because we cannot see the uh, 
actual CPU frequency because of the bug with CPU-Z. So if you move the base clock like 3 to 5 megahertz inside the operating system, the multiplier will go down by one value and vice versa. So, so if you drop the base clock 3 to 5 megahertz, the multiplier will go up uh, in CPU-Z by one value, but it's not actually real. It's just a bug. It's not actually uh, correct. So, so yeah, so like uh, 200, almost 200 millisecond gain in Superby 1M over the previous top score made by Gutters, Gutter Z from the USA. I think I the first PyFast run at the start was 60 uh, or 15.06, so like uh, 160 milliseconds faster than my previous top score with Core i7 960. Under 15 seconds is definitely possible, but it was actually very hard. It was harder to run PyFast once again than Superbike 32 amp, but that's kind of something I've seen very often. X58 and 775, it's something I've seen quite often that PyFast is very hard to run on these platforms, sometimes harder than Superbike 32 amp, and it's very fast. So that's why I like, I like to use PyFast for binning, at least on 775. W primes I, I, I tried very briefly, but uh, so far didn't seem that good. So maybe this CPU is mainly just super for single threaded stuff, not so much for multi-core, but I'm sure there's more headroom remaining. I'm just missing something. So I'm sure I can run even faster on the W primes as well with the CPU with more time, etc. But yeah, so now Except the highest validation with the Core i7 Extreme 965, so the first Extreme Bloomfield, the C1 stepping, I'm pretty much the Bloomfield king. So now I have every single CPU, the, top, the important top scores that is, I mean, 920, 930, 940, 950, 960, 965 and 975. So the only one I'm missing is the highest validation with 965 Extreme, and maybe then some Xeons, but they, those aren't so important for me. So now I got what I wanted. Extremely happy, in extremely amazing results with now with this Core i7-960. I never thought someone could validate over 6 GHz with the CPU model, but hey, we did it. So, yeah, sometimes hard work pays off. But yeah, all of these uh, results will be on uh, hardwarebot.org, so definitely check them out if you're interested in these runs and results and my efforts. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and check out my Patreon page as well if you want to support my work and maybe contact me personally via Discord, etc. About old hardware, new hardware, whatever. But yeah, otherwise, thanks for watching one of my legacy overclocking videos once again. And I will see you on the next one.